Amen. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to this morning's service. Amen. I thank God who has already began blessing us with his presence, and I'm sure that he will cause us to have revelations of who he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to encourage you. The Bible says, The Lord, even as the Lord comforted, comforts us, he said, With the same comfort, we are supposed to comfort others. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I just want us to realize that in every situation and circumstance, you know, I want us to realize that the Lord is the one that is in control of our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want us to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We'll read from verse 2. It says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Amen. I, I want us to realize is this is a difficult pill. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a difficult pill. The wilderness is not a place to live. How many of us know that? Amen. The wilderness is not a place to live. But for 40 years, the children of Israel were living in the what? Wilderness. For 40 years. Not one day, not two days. Not one month, not one year, for 40 years they were living in the wilderness. And for all their time in the wilderness, it was God. Amen. He said he led them these 40 years in the wilderness to do what? To humble them and to prove them. And also to know what was in their heart. Amen. And to know whether they would also keep his commandments. Amen? Praise the Lord. And, you know, he said again, he was the one that caused them to go hungry. Amen? It was not, it was as bad as it is that they were already in the wilderness, and yet in the wilderness, he then again caused them to do what? To go hungry. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank God that even though he suffered them to go hungry, the Bible says he fed them with what? manner. He took care of them. Amen. I want us to realize that in this life, we go through things not because God hates us, but because it is actually that the plan of God might be worked out in our lives. Amen. So I want us to be comforted this morning and to know that in whatever situation or circumstance of life we have found ourselves, that God knows about it. Amen. And he is the one that is working it out for his own purpose in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes it's difficult. It's difficult to appreciate this truth. It's difficult. You can hear it over and over again, you know. But sometimes when you go out in the, into the world, you begin to ask yourself, why me? Why me? What, why must it be me that will go through all this suffering? Amen. Why should it be me? And when you ask that question, why me? You should also ask yourself, why should even God consider you for the kingdom? Amen? Do you deserve to be considered for the kingdom of God? Amen. Does anyone deserve to go to hell? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of you know that nobody deserves to go to hell? Do you know that? You may think that some people deserve to go to hell. But I tell you the truth, nobody deserves to go to hell. Because if for any reason you believe in your heart that some people ought to be in hell, then you should be the one there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you do anything to deserve to be in God's kingdom? So why, why would you feel that some other person deserves to be in hell? Nobody deserves to be in hell. I mean, <laughs> praise the Lord. 
that's the battle, the enemy. If anyone, you know, unfortunately finds himself in hell, it is only the enemy that has sabotaged that individual. The Bible says it's not the will of God that anyone should perish. Amen. Do you believe that? It's not the will of God that any should perish. But what we have is that the enemy works very hard to sabotage people from entering into the kingdom of God. And what amazes me is that many times we, we look and、um, we conclude for other people how that they deserve to go to hell and how they are evil. Jesus said, first of all, remove the plank that is in your eye. The one that is in your eye is a plank. The one that you are seeing in some other person is what? Dust. Amen. You understand what Jesus is saying? At any point in time, what is in your eye is what? And then what, that one that you are saying is wicked that is asked to go to hell, what is in his own eye is what? Dust. Amen. If you can understand that, it will help you. Amen. <laughs> you don't have any right to judge anyone. Don't have any right. Have no right to judge anyone. Amen. You can go as far as the word of God saying, Look, I know that based on the word of God, this is not right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh huh. Now, for you to condemn that individual, you don't have the right. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. You can just declare, as far as the word of God has said, that you know that this lifestyle is not the best. That's the word of God. You, you don't have the right to not tell, say that that individual should go to hell. The Bible says that once upon a time, we are all in the, same,、eh, in the same pit of sin. Amen. If supposing. At that time, somebody prophesied that you should go to hell. How would you feel? <laughs> Amen. You understand what I'm saying? If somebody, if at that time, somebody, you had somebody, maybe you were an unbeliever, and then you had somebody praying that you should die and go to hell. Now that you, you are a believer, how would you feel about that individual? Would you consider that person a wicked fellow? <laughs>、eh? So he wanted you to just die and go to hell <laughs> without knowing Jesus. <laughs>、eh? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Bless your enemies. Pray for them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pray for them. Because it is this understanding that separates you from them. He said, If you love only those who love you, how are you different from the rest of the world? Because they do the same thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying?、It's、when you have this understanding, it will help you to begin to love people, to be passionate about reaching out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I tell you, Forget about the smash man and all the things that they say and do. <laughs> you know, underneath what you are seeing is just emptiness. And then you should know that that individual deserves mercy. Amen. He deserves mercy. You see, or she is clearly deceived. If he or she understands what he is doing, they will turn. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you this morning to know that whatever situation, whatever circumstance, The Lord is aware of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And He is the one that is fully in charge. Now, when you understand this, then you can begin to flow into the will of God. Amen. Last week, we, we talked about the will of God in our lives. Amen. How many remember what we talked about last week? Amen. Christ in you, the hope of what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And the reason why we said many of us are still in the process of appreciating this truth is the reason why we have not begun to, as it were, you know, begin to experience the reality of what God is saying. Amen. Experience the reality of what God is saying. And、my prayer is that that experience we will have it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's my prayer that God will allow each and of every one of us to experience Him. Amen. I want us to understand that when anyone says, What is the will? You know, that's uh, uh, you know, something that we have not really fully appreciated when we talk about the will of God. What is the will of God for my life? Amen. What is the will of God for my life? Let's look at Philippians chapter 
Let's try to understand what that will is all about. Philippians chapter 1. I begin to read from verse, from verse 19. Philippians chapter 1, from verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all goodness, as always. So now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to, me to, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to, you know, stop it there. For me, for to me to live is what? And to die is what? For me to live is what? Paul says, if I'm going to live, It will have to be what? Christ. Amen. No, nothing else. I, I'm, 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 I have a problem. Amen. A problem, I don't know whether to stay or whether to go. Amen. But I know that if I decide to go, I will be present with the Lord. But if I decide to stay here, it will be what? Christ. It will be Christ in manifestation. If I'm going to live in this world, it has to be what? Christ. Did you see? Did he say Paul will now manifest? Who will manifest? Now, I state it again the will of God for you and I, for every believer, is to manifest Christ. Amen. To do what? To manifest Christ. If you are able to do that, you have done the will of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the will of God for your life. It's not whether you become governor, you become president, whether that one is your own、um, preoccupation. Amen. Preoccupation is what you do until you discover the main occupation. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whether you become governor, engineer, president, whatever, is a preoccupation. Your main occupation is what? To manifest Christ. To manifest Christ. And now he says, According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that I, in nothing I shall be ashamed, that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Christ shall be what? Magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Christ shall be magnified, magnified in my body. When you get it all wrong, believing that it's about you, it's not about you, amen. <laughs> you know, I don't know how, I don't know when we are going to get it. I just pray that God will help us to get it. It's not about you, amen. It's not about you. The you that you used to know, we read it last week. Paul said, It is no longer I that what? That lives, but who? Christ that lives in me. What happened to Paul? Paul was crucified. Amen. And the one now living is a new creature in Christ. A new creature in Christ. The old Paul,、eh? what happened to him? He has been crucified. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I dare to say again that until you understand. This mystery, you are far from being born again. Amen? I dare to say it again. Until you understand this mystery, you are far from being born again. Born again is、um, a way of identification. Amen? <laughs> I see、uh, Christians and Muslims fighting, killing themselves. Is that, are you a Christian or a Muslim? I'm a Christian. And you are a Muslim and they start fighting. The funny thing is that the one claiming that he's a Christian doesn't even know what being a Christian is all about. The one fighting that he's a Muslim does not even know what it means to be a Muslim.、Yeah? I'm a Christian. I'm a Mo- they, they bring that knife and they start killing each other. Whether he understands what being a Christian is, he doesn't, doesn't know. I'm a Christian. <laughs> it's not what we're talking about. It's not that you are a Christian, you are born again. It's not,、um, that one is story. Story. We're not talking about born again, Christian. What we are talking about is that you do what? Manifest Christ. Manifest Christ. I'm not here to tell you, I'll talk to you about being born again. That one is,、um, 
it has been so much, um, how would I put it, uh, messed up that anything goes. Amen. But when, when we are talking about manifesting Christ, it will always stand out from the crowd. We're not talking about born again. Amen. <laughs> is there, is this, one, well, this one is, we have moved on a higher plane. Amen. We're not talking about being born again. We're talking about manifesting Christ. That is the standard of God. That is the will of God. Remember, his, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see. So what does born again do? Born again enables you to, you know, be qualified to manifest Christ. It doesn't mean that because you are born again now, Christ will start manifesting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It just brings you into that platform to be able to manifest Christ. That's why Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. He didn't say enter. He said see. Amen. And then he said, except you be born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. There are two different things. I'm not talking about born again. I'm talking about manifestation of Christ. And that is being born of water and the spirit. That's what it means. To be born of water and the spirit means to manifest Christ. Not born again. Born again qualifies you to see. And until you are able to manifest Christ, you don't know anything about who you say you belong to. Don't know anything. Paul said, he declared, if I'm to live, let Christ be magnified in my life. There's no other, no other vision, no other purpose in life other than let Christ be made manifest. Let him be magnified in my body. He said, for me to live is Christ. No other manifestation, it must be Christ in manifestation. Brethren, this thing is no joke. Anything God says is serious about it. And if you don't understand it, you are only doing it. If you are playing out ignorance, you are only doing it to your own detriment. I told you, nobody deserves to go to hell. But if you allow the enemy, if you allow the enemy not to allow you to understand what is being said, you have only cheated yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what God says. To, for you to, that's the standard of God. Amen. <laughs> to manifest Christ. That is the standard. You can't remove from it. You know, it's not Jesus. He said, you can't remove, you can't take away, you can't add. Amen. No addition, no taking away. It must be who? Christ. When you understand that this is the will of God, and then you position yourself. That's why Jesus told them, he said, he taught, he taught man how to pray. He said, let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is the will of God on earth? That Christ be made what? Manifest. That's the will of God. You understand it? That's the prayer Jesus was teaching us how to pray. Let the will of God be done. Let Christ be made manifest. That's his will. <laughs> That's the will of God. Let Christ be made manifest. If you don't understand it, Unfortunately, you will have no business in the kingdom of God. Because that's what the kingdom of God is all about. Jesus has already told you, as it is done where? So in heaven, what do you have in heaven? Will of God is what? Christ. What you have in heaven is what? Manifestation of what? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. That's what you have. You have in heaven manifestation of what? Christ. And so God is saying, let there also be manifestation of Christ here on earth. <laughs> if, if you understand it, then it's not about you. Amen. That's why God put in a process to remove you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you can't do it. You can't do it. That's why he removed you from the process and then enabled his son. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we, are we following this morning? Amen. That is the will of God that you and I will manifest Jesus Christ. You know it's simple. What I'm saying is very simple. It removes all ambiguity about this will of God. Amen. 
Because I don't know whether the will of God is for me to be an engineer or a doctor. Only if you are successful in what you are doing, that's when people will say, ah, that is, in doing the, that is what God has called him to do. <laughs> I remember those days, my parents frustrated me from playing football. I, do you know that if it were today, do, do you think they would disturb me? Nobody would have disturbed me. Because footballers are now the people, you know, with the mega box. Amen. <laughs> Uh, they are stars. So, Kanu uh, Wanko now is, um, is, so, is someone God blessed and um, destined him to enter his will for his life. Amen. <laughs> if you are, if, as even now you end up being a barrel pusher at the Obwete Men Market, do you think anybody will consider that you are doing the will of God? But if from that uh, barrel pushing, you now build a three story building. Would the, would the uh, mindset of the people change? They will say, that's the way, that's what God called him to, <laughs> to do. <laughs> yeah? Because he has made success out of it. Amen. But that's not what God is saying. That, what I'm trying to tell you is that all those things you, you say is the will of God, that's your own business. The will of God for you and I is to manifest Christ. It has nothing to do whether you are a professional footballer, whether you are a doctor, an accountant, an engineer, a lawyer, whatever you are no business with what God is talking about. The business of God is for you to do what? To manifest Christ. That's the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at Romans chapter 12 as we begin to understand how we can manifest Christ. How we can manifest Christ. That is, that is my problem. That is your problem. Amen. Hallelujah. How we are able to, to, to go about it says a lot about us. Amen. Remember I told us that this is a mystery. The manifestation of Christ is a mystery. It comes by revelation. Amen. No one can manifest Christ without revelation. It's a mystery. Now, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul was writing to the Romans. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. Now, I want us to pick some points here. Now, Paul is beseeching you, he's pleading with you and I. He said, by the mercy of God, I'm pleading with you, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice that you do what present your bodies as what a living sacrifice who will do the presentation you amen you are supposed to do the presentation you are supposed to because the truth of the matter is that you know even though you have been crucified with christ you are still the owner of the body Amen. Do you know that? You are still owning the body. You are still calling the shots. Amen. <laughs> God never does anything by force. You are still the one calling the shots. Now, Paul is saying, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you, even though this belongs to you, that you offer it as a sacrifice to God. When, when something is sacrificed, you know, it's mean, it means something that has been killed, something that is dead. Present this as a what? Sacrifice. Give it up to God. Make your body available to God as a sacrifice. Even though it belongs to you, even though your body belongs to you, it belongs to you. But God is saying, Paul is saying, I beseech you, I plead with you. This is what you need to do. This is your reasonable service to God. Offer your body as a sacrifice. Offer your body. Remember, I told us last week, God lives in us by his spirit. Amen. God lives in each and every one of us by his spirit. Now, the truth of the matter is that even though the tabernacle belongs to us, we still own the tabernacle. The face is the face God put in us when we were uh, you know, put into this world. But by the Spirit of God, Christ is the one now making use of the tabernacle, the body. Amen. But the issue there is that if though Christ is the one that is supposed to be making use of the tabernacle, 
you can also decide that you don't want Christ to make use of the tabernacle any longer. Are you following what I'm saying? Now Paul is saying the only way you can, you know, put put out that possibility is to do what? To sacrifice that tabernacle. Make it a sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Make it what? A sacrifice. Give it up to him. Because if you don't give it up to him, that's why today we see you, tomorrow we see Christ. Next tomorrow we see you, next tomorrow we see Christ. You know? We don't know who is now handling the body, whether it's Christ or you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we become confused. The reason why it is so is because you have not given up the tabernacle. <laughs> Amen. You have not done what? Given up the tabernacle. You have not. You are still holding on to it. And until you give up that tabernacle, you can't have Christ manifested. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. You can't have Christ manifested. I still, I still maintain what I said. This is a mystery. Remember, what we are doing is to try to understand better this mystery. Amen. Because if we understand better this mystery by revelation, then we can, you know, do the, you know, because the will of God is that we will be able to manifest Christ. That's what we are looking to do, to do the will of God. That's why Paul said, this is your reasonable service. To make your body available to Christ. Make it available to Christ. And Paul, in trying to, you know, put across what he wants us to understand, is trying to let us, you know, bring it down to the simplest of terms for us to understand what is expected. He's talking about sacrifice. Sacrifice. Amen. Sacrifice. Sacrifice your body, which is your reasonable service. And then in verse 2, he says, and be not conformed anymore to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That your mind be renewed, that you may prove who? That you may prove the will of God. And the will of God we have known is who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's telling you, look at where your mind ought to be right now. That your mind ought to be set on understanding who he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now that you have sacrificed your body, the next thing you should do is to focus on understanding who he is. That's what he's saying there. Remember I told us that Understanding this mystery and cooperating with the mystery determines how God is going to reward you in eternity. Praise the Lord. How many know that God is not going to reward you in eternity because you are the richest man in the whole world or because you were able to um, live a good family life or you were able to build a house in the village? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All those titles they give you when you have accomplished. Amen. How many know that God is not going to reward you in eternity based on any of those things? Your reward in eternity is going to be based on how well you are able to understand this mystery and your cooperation with the mystery. Are you following what I'm saying? That's how God is going to reward you in eternity. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, when the Bible says that Jesus Christ is your inheritance, when he says that he is your inheritance, I, I believe that maybe, you know, further along the line of, you know, of where we are going, we are going to talk about how that Jesus Christ is your inheritance. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that when you are joking with your life, you will know what you are joking with. When the Bible says you are playing with your inheritance, you understand what you are doing. Now, you see, you know why people sin? You know why people sin? They sin because they lack understanding. That's why they say. <laughs> when you understand, you know, that's what I'm telling you, it's a mystery. The reason why you still get yourself involved in sin is because you don't understand the mystery. If you understand the mystery, 
you will know that you are simply undoing. Now, understand something. You know, it's not about going. Now, understand that when you are a believer in Christ, it's not about going to hell. I'm not living my life right now so that I will not go to hell. It's not the issue. I mean, we've gone b e y o n d past that. It's not about going to hell. The issue now is possessing Christ as your inheritance. That is what is at stake now. It's only unbelievers that worry, you know, if you hear from Christ, say, I just want to make heaven. That's rubbish talk. It shows what the level of your Christianity. I want to make heaven. Yeah? I don't, I'm just, you know, I don't want anything to, you know, disturb my. I just want to make heaven. It's not about making heaven. I don't want to go to hell. You hear believers talking, like, I want to make heaven. I don't want to go to hell. It, it simply shows that these ones. Don't know their left from their right. When your life is about going to heaven and not going to hell, you don't know, you don't know your left from your right. You, you, you are, in fact, you are lost. It's not about going to heaven or going to hell. You, it's now about possessing Christ as your inheritance. It's because if it's still about making heaven and not going to hell, you will still be. Uh, in the bondage of sin, you will still be living in the bondage under the dominion of sin because you will be struggling. But if you are going to go beyond that struggle with sin, you have to have understanding that it's now about possessing Christ as your inheritance. When that becomes the case, you wouldn't, for any reason, for any price in this world, want to meddle with sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> because you have not understood that Christ is your inheritance, that's why you can play around with sin. And then you'll be waiting for who will tell you.、Uh, Work that can, we know, or like that, how they say it. You'll be looking for who will be following you <laughs> and be telling you, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, don't fornicate. <laughs> Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. The only difference now is that this sacrifice is a living one. Amen. It's not a dead sacrifice, but it's a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You know, let's just go back to Romans chapter 6. And then we can further cement what we are talking about. Romans chapter 6, from verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we, also, we, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve. Sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say, Praise the Lord. Is there anything that you need to know again concerning the fact that you have been crucified and that you are dead in Christ? Amen. Praise the Lord. You have been what? Crucified and you are dead in Christ. And then he's saying that even as God raised up Jesus from the dead, so also the Father will, will cause you to begin to walk in the newness of life. Amen. It will cause you to begin to walk in the newness of life. And that newness of life is being able to understand this mystery. Amen. Because you can walk. In something you don't understand. Amen. You can't operate something you don't understand. Now, I, I, want, us, I want us to pay attention to something because I, I'm just, I just want to bring out some truth here. Now, understand, understand that it says, You and I have been baptized into his death. We have been crucified with him and we are dead in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. When Jesus Christ was being crucified, we were crucified alongside with him. And we died with him. He said, We have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Praise the Lord. We have been planted together in the likeness of his death. And now we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 
Did you pick out anything there? Amen. We have been planted in the likeness of his death. So we died with him. When he was being crucified, we were crucified alongside with him. And now he has been raised by the glory of the Father. He has been raised by the glory of the Father. And now we have been told that we have been also、uh, raised in the same likeness of his resurrection. So, what has transpired, what has happened to you and I, is that it is the glory of the Father that has also raised us up. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, so that you can understand that we are now living. In the glory of the Father. That is to say, we are living by the power of the Father. So that it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Are you getting a point? You are a different person altogether. Something has happened to you. You have been transformed, you have been crucified. But now, the one who is living in you is the one who has been raised by the power of God. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm saying that the you, the new you, the, that new creature in Christ Jesus is no longer the old you. The old you did not have the power of God, it was not living by the glory of the Father. But some Has happened. There is a new you that is a manifestation that is living by the glory of the Father. It's not you, the you, the you that you used to know. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know whether you, you are figuring out what I'm talking about. It's a new you planted in the likeness of his resurrection. A new you, a new you, that new you. Is the one who is in manifestation. Amen. Praise the Lord. That new you is the one who is in manifestation. Praise the Lord. And that new you is the one who has sacrificed the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Has sacrificed the body. You remember, you're living by the glory of the Father. And I want you to understand that you can, you as an individual, the old you cannot make that sacrifice of your body. The old you cannot make that sacrifice of the body. It is the new you that has been planted in the likeness of his resurrection that makes sacrifice. Of the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the new you who is now seeking to understand the mystery. It's not the old you. The old you has no business with understanding the mystery. Are you following what I'm saying? Has no business. <laughs> Glory be to God. Has no business with understanding the mystery. It's the new you who lays down the body as a sacrifice and then positions itself to understand the mystery. That's Adam. Are you hearing me? That's how Adam was when he was created by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Adam was supposed to mature to understand the mystery of Christ. He was supposed to mature to understand the mystery of Christ before the enemy sabotaged him. When you talk about Adam, you consider yourself if, if it were you, you would have done better. Now you are the Adam. <laughs> God is looking at you. Amen. You are that new creator in Christ Jesus. That's what Adam was. He was a new creator. He was created after the righteousness and holiness of God. A new creator. Adam knew no sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the new you that ought to lay your body as a sacrifice and comprehend the mystery. The moment you live comprehending the mystery, what you are doing. Is that you want to give room to the old man to resurface again? That's what is happening. Because the power of the new man is in that renewing, that understanding, that revelation of the mystery. That's where his power lies, that's where his strength lies. The moment he takes his focus away from that realization, that understanding, 
The old man creeps in. When the old man creeps in, it begins to mess up everything. That's what happened. And I told you about um, I told you about Peter and his walk on the water. That's what happened to Peter. That's what happened to Peter. He was able to walk on the water. He was able to live in the supernatural. He was able to manifest Christ as long as he was focused on the mystery. Amen. The moment he allowed the old man to come back. To assume control of the tabernacle, the whole story became a different story again. How are we going to, you know, that's why, you know, Jesus said, and when the disciples, he said, they said to him, who can be saved? He said, with God, all things are possible. With man, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. When we talk about the manifestation of Christ, let Christ be, it looks so simple that the will, uh, will of God is that Christ be made manifest in your life. But I, I tell you the truth, in actual practice, it is the most difficult thing in your life. The most difficult task that you have to undertake. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The most difficult task that you have to undertake in life. But Jesus said, with man it is impossible. But with God all things are possible. To manifest Christ, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not a come case. Amen. <laughs> that's why you. That's why you were crucified because you can't do it. You need to be dead to carry it out. No one who is alive can manifest Christ. No one. I dare you, whoever you are. No one who is alive can manifest Christ. Only dead men manifest Christ. Dead, crucified. You cannot manifest Christ if you are not dead. You can't. It's not possible. You can't. It's beyond you. You don't have the ability. It's beyond you. That's why you were planted in the likeness of his death. God doesn't need you to be alive. You need to be dead in him so that his son, Jesus Christ, can manifest in your body. 